Hey guys, here at the Coliseum, are you looking for things to do in the area? Some more Roman ruins, uh, some underground sites, some rooftop bars. On this video, I'm going to share with you all the best things there are to see and do right here by the Coliseum. I get this question quite a lot. What is there to do near the Coliseum? And I always think to myself, well, wait a minute, <laughs> the Coliseum is a destination unto itself. Not only that, the standard Coliseum ticket and the full experience Coliseum ticket both come with entry to the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill. Not only that, but the full experience ticket allows you access to the super sites on the Palatine Hill and in the Roman Forum. And since visiting that park alone can take me all day, I always think, well, what else can you possibly have time for? However, I think that for most people, a visit to the Colosseum takes about three hours if you include a visit to the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill, especially if you do it as a tour. So this is pretty much a half day visit. And so I decided to make this video for those of you who are visiting the Colosseum maybe for half a day and want to know what else there is to do for the rest of the day, or for those of you who are staying in the neighborhood and want to know what are some other things you can do. Right here by the Colosseum, we have many more ruins from ancient Rome. There are also some stunning churches you can visit, as well as some fantastic museums. You'll also find there are a few parks and gardens where you can go and cool down and take a load off. And I'm going to throw in a few rooftop bars to boot. All right, starting with ancient Roman ruins. You are here visiting the Colosseum. You can't get enough of the ancient stuff. You are spoiled for choice. One of the most amazing and best ruins that you can visit right here near the Colosseum is the Domus Aurea. I mentioned this site first because it actually has quite a lot to do with why the Colosseum was built in the first place. I'm not going to get too much into that or this video would be too long, but suffice to say, the Domus Aurea, meaning Golden House, was the house of Emperor Nero. Actually, when I say house, uh, it was a villa. It was this massive expanse all for him. He built this incredible estate for himself and eventually they covered over part of it and they built what you know today as the Colosseum. So to find out more about this story and to see this incredible site, you can visit my page on the website. I also have a video that I did for you guys about it. The next wonderful site from ancient Rome near the Colosseum is the Baths of Caracalla. You might know that the Romans loved their baths. These were public baths that were built in the early third century under the emperor Caracalla and also his father, Septimius Severus. This site is within easy walking distance of the Colosseum. It's also one of the sites that I recommend you visit if you really want to see Roman architecture at its best, but without <laughs> those crowds. For more about these baths, I've got a page on the website. I've linked to that below. I've also done a video for you about it, so you can check that out as well. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, would you please go ahead and hit that like button below? Apparently, it really helps with the algorithm, and I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. One of my very favorite sites in Rome is right here near the Colosseum. It's called the Roman Houses at Celio, or the Case Romane al Celio. Celio means Celian Hill. This refers to one of the seven hills of Rome. The Roman houses of Celio are not far from where I'm standing. It's very easy to visit them if you just walk a little bit away from the Colosseum. It is an underground site, so it's also a great way to keep cool. Perhaps a less obvious site from ancient Rome is the Circus Maximus. When I say it's less obvious, it's just because it doesn't have these huge ruins that you can visit. It does have ruins you can visit, and in fact, there is a really cool virtual reality headset that you can use to see what the Circus Maximus once looked like in ancient Rome. Today, it is a big park. Uh, we go there for jogging, walking dogs, actually seeing concerts, uh, horse shows. There's a lot going on in Circus Maximus that doesn't really feel like ancient Rome, but it is an ancient Roman site. And for more about the Circus Maximus, I have a page about it on the website, which I've linked to below. The last ancient Roman site I want to tell you about that's near the Colosseum is the Mamertine Prison. I find a lot of people are not really aware of this site, but it's a really important site and it's very easy to visit. In fact, you can buy a combined ticket that gets you into both sites, the Colosseum and the Mamertine Prison, and it does also include the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill. The Mamertine Prison sits on Capitoline Hill just underneath Campidoglio. It's right next to one of the access points for the Roman Forum. This site is said to be where Saints Peter and Paul were held prisoner before they each met their fates. It also is used as a prison for many other people, which you can learn about when you visit the site. 
Actually, the word prison is something of a misnomer because it was really just a big hole in the ground where they threw people that they deemed to be criminals until they decided what to do with them. It's a really easy site to visit and it's very well done. They did a renovation a few years back and created this really good museum. But going down into the prison itself is a tiny bit claustrophobic. All right, moving on from ancient Roman sites, let's talk about some of the amazing churches that you can see right in this neighborhood. Rome is a city of nearly a thousand churches, and there are a lot of churches near the Colosseum. But on this video, I'm just going to share with you my favorites. Let's start with one of the more famous churches near the Colosseum, San Clemente. The Basilica of San Clemente is really special. Not only can you go inside and visit this beautiful church with its stunning apse and cosmetesque floors, but you can go and visit the underground with not one, but two different layers from different periods of ancient Rome. At the very bottom layer, you will be able to see a Mithra, which is part of an ancient religion called Mithraism. Mithraism was almost always practiced underground, and we have quite a few of these Mithraea in Rome, but this is arguably one of the most famous and easiest to access. I think another favorite for a lot of people right here near the Colosseum is St. Peter in Chains, San Pietro in Vincoli. The Basilica of St. Peter in Chains holds exactly what it says, the chains that held St. Peter. And while that is already something very special to see, the church is also home to one of Michelangelo's most famous and most beautiful sculptures, Moses. This sculpture was originally meant to be part of the tomb of Pope Julius II, the same Pope who harangued Michelangelo into painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The tomb was never finished, but this Moses remains, and it is in this church and absolutely stunning. The church of Santo Stefano is really, really beautiful, as you can see. One of the things that I think uh, either attracts people or scares people off just a little bit is the fact that the entire church is covered with frescoes that show scenes of martyrs meeting their fate in very gruesome ways. So whether you come for the beautiful architecture or to see these frescoes, this church really does warrant a visit, and it is very close to the Colosseum. Another church I think a lot of people don't know about that's right here near the Colosseum, it's just along the Via dei Fori Imperiali, is the church of Santi Cosma e Damiano. Cosma e Damiano were two Greek saints who were doctors and they were martyred, and they have quite a few churches named for them. This church in particular is amazing for the stunning Byzantine apse. Another interesting thing about this church is that it was built on top of a pagan round temple, which you might know as the Temple of Romulus. This is inside of the Roman Forum. And if you visit the church of Santi Cosma Damiano and you look towards the back, you can see down into this temple from above. One last thing this church is famous for is its nativity scene, which is enormous. It is made with beautiful figurines from Naples, it is visible year-round, and it is a very special thing to see. And the last church I want to include for you here on today's video is the Basilica of Santi Quattro. Santi Quattro refers to the four saints who were crowned, Santi Quattro e Coronati. This church is really beautiful all by itself, but it also has the stunning chapel of St. Sylvester. And you can see more about that chapel in this video. If you're visiting the Colosseum and hot and tired and looking for a place to grab some shade, put your feet up, there are a few parks and gardens right nearby. My favorite park near the Colosseum is the Villa Celimontana. I've done a video for you about this, so you can check that out right here. There are a couple of other parks and gardens nearby, although they're not that close. They're on the Aventine Hill. You have the Rose Garden, which is open from the end of April through just the beginning of June and again in October. There is also the Orange Tree Garden and the Garden of Sant'Alessio. Okay, museums near the Colosseum. The two most obvious museums near the Colosseum are actually inside of the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill. Inside of the Roman Forum and included with every ticket is access to the new Museum of Giacomo Boni. The Museum of Giacomo Boni, named for the archeologist who excavated the Roman Forum in the 1920s, is just behind the Temple of Venus and Roma. They only opened it recently and it is absolutely fantastic. It is so well curated and you will see lots of artifacts that they found when they were excavating the Roman Forum. 
The Palatine Museum is inside of the Palatine Hill and is only accessible when you buy one of the full experience tickets or if you buy the Roman Forum Super Pass. It is considered one of the super sites. So besides the museums that are inside of the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill, there are a couple of other wonderful museums you can visit right nearby. The Capitoline Museums are considered to be the oldest museums in the world. They were founded in the 15th century by Pope Sixtus IV, the same guy for whom the Sistine Chapel is named. In the 18th century, the collection was given to the public and it is today one of the best museums you can visit to see ancient Roman artifacts, stunning art, and so much more. The museum is on Campidoglio, the top of Capitoline Hill, where you'll also find the mayor's office. That statue you see in the square of Marcus Aurelius on his horse is a replica. The original is inside of the museums. When you visit the Capitoline Museums, you can see parts of the original structure of the temple that once stood on Capitoline Hill. Not only will you see incredible art and artifacts from ancient Rome, there is a whole Pinacoteca, an art gallery with masterpieces by Caravaggio, Guido Reni, Rubens, and so many more. In Piazza Venezia, we have the Vittoriano, which is in itself a museum. The building itself is free to visit, but there are a few things that you can do once you're inside. One of the museums is the Museo del Risorgimento, which is all about the war that led to the unification of Italy. You can also take the elevator all the way to the top and have some of the best views in Rome. And with this same ticket, you can also access the museum that's on the other side of the piazza called Palazzo Venezia. Also right on Piazza Venezia is the Palazzo Bonaparte, where they hold temporary exhibitions. You can see what's showing there and see if you can get tickets to go in. And just a little bit down the Via del Corso, you can visit the stunning Galleria Doria Pamphili. Last but not least, this area is home to some beautiful rooftop bars. Probably the one closest to the Colosseum, with arguably the best views of the Colosseum, is the Palazzo Manfredi. Now at the top you find the Michelin-starred Aroma restaurant, but there's also a bar on the ground level which overlooks the Ludus Magnus. This is where the gladiators used to train. So technically the rooftop part is the restaurant at the top and the bar, the court, that's overlooking the Colosseum is not exactly a rooftop. It's still a pretty special place to go and have a drink if you want this amazing view. The Hotel Forum at the Forum Imperiali is another beautiful rooftop bar. My actual favorite rooftop bar right near here is at the Shamrock Restaurant. The Shamrock Restaurant is not far from the Colosseum and you do have a slight view of it, but it is definitely a more relaxed atmosphere. Two more really stunning rooftops you can visit that are a little bit closer to Piazza Venezia include the NH at the Fort Imperiali, very difficult to get into lately, and the Hotel Otium. If you're looking for some good places to eat in the area, that's actually too much information for this video, but I have a page all about that on the website and I've linked to it in the description below. All right guys, what do you think? Did you know about all of these places to visit near the Colosseum? Do you think you'll include some of them on your next itinerary? Drop me a line in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And for lots more tips about visiting the Colosseum, check out my Colosseum playlist right here.